Hello everyone. In this episode of my OpenShot tutorial, I'm gonna explain the fundamental principles and steps of animating a video in OpenShot. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to add various animation effects to any part of your video, such as zooming, panning, sliding, spinning, and other cool animations like the ones in this demo video. Alright, before I dive into the detailed steps and principles of animating a video, let me first show you a quick way of adding simple animation, without having to understand how it is actually done, using the preset animations provided by OpenShot. To add a preset animation, right-click the clip on the timeline, and then select Animate. As you can see here on the Animate submenu, these preset animations can only be added to the start or to the end of the clip, or to the entire clip. They cannot be added to any point in the middle of the clip, and their durations are preset to either one second or the entire clip's duration. As of OpenShot 3.1 which I'm using now, there are five types of preset animations you can use straight away. You can add zooming animations, sliding from the center to any of the four edges of the screen, sliding from edge to center, sliding from edge to edge, and random animation selected by OpenShot. Now let me just add a zooming in from 50% to 100% animation to the start of this video clip, and then see how the video will look like. Alright, so that's how quick and simple it is to add animation using the preset animations. If you want to quickly remove the animations from the clip, simply right click the clip, select animate, and then click no animation. But please be warned that, this will remove all the animations you have added to this clip. In addition to the preset animations accessible from the Animate menu, OpenShot also provides preset fade-in and fade-out effects for both video and audio tracks, which basically work on the same principles as the animation. To quickly add a fade-in or fade-out effect to the video component, right-click the clip, select Fade, and then select whether you want to add the fade effect to the start or to the end of the clip, or to the entire clip. If you select Entire Clip, you may choose to add both the fade-in effect to the start of the clip and the fade-out effect to the end of the clip at once. As for the audio track or audio component of the video, you can add a fade-in or fade-out effect from the volume menu. Alright, now let's dive into the detailed steps and principles of how animating a video in OpenShot is actually done, so that by the end of this tutorial you are able to animate any part of your video, with any duration and interpolation mode. Simply speaking, animating a video in OpenShot is essentially interpolating the values of the clip's properties between two key frames, based on the start values specified on the start frame, the end values on the end frame, and the selected property value interpolation mode. The properties that can be animated are only those that are of type keyframe, which are usually indicated by having slider values on the properties panel. But to really find out if a property is a keyframe property, right-click that property to show its context menu. A keyframe property will have the insert keyframe menu item, while a non-keyframe won't have it. So having said that, the first step of adding animation is to identify the clip's properties that will give us the desired animation. To do that, simply click and drag the property value slider left and right to simulate any animation effect that particular property will have on the video. For example, if I click and drag the alpha properties value slider left and right, I will get fade in and fade out effects. Similarly, if I click and drag the location X or location Y properties value slider, I will get a sliding animation. Or, if I click and drag the scale X or scale Y properties value slider, I will get a zooming animation. You may also try other properties, such as the rotation, origin, and shear properties. And if you have added a built-in effect to a video clip, you may also try out its properties to see if they will animate the video. For example, let me add a crop effect and show you how its properties may animate your video. Alright, to make this clearer and easier to understand, let's put this into practice by adding a zooming in animation one second into this video, from a normal scale of 1 to a zoomed in scale of 2. So as the first step, we identify the scale X and scale Y properties as the interpolated properties. The second step of adding animation is to determine the start keyframe, and then insert that frame into the interpolated properties that we have identified in step 1. If the desired start frame is not the first frame of the video, to conveniently move the playhead to that frame, 
First zoom in the timeline until each second mark appears on the timeline ruler. Then for more accurate positioning, use the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard to move the playhead left and right one frame at a time, as indicated by the frame number to the left of the timeline ruler. So for this exercise, I'll move the playhead to the one second and one frame mark on the timeline ruler, or to frame 25 of the video. This will be our zooming in animations start keyframe. Then I'll go to the scale X and scale Y properties, right click each property and then click insert keyframe. As you can see here, the scale X and scale Y properties now turns green. This green highlight indicates that the current frame, or the frame at which the playback currently is, is a keyframe of the scale X and scale Y properties. In addition to that, if we look at the clip on track 1, now it has a keyframe icon at the current playhead position. Now here is a little note on this second step. The values of the scale properties of this start keyframe will become the starting values of the property value interpolation that will produce the zooming in animation later. If the start keyframe is the first frame of the clip, we may still change these properties values if necessary. For example, if I were to add a zooming in animation to the start of this clip from a scale factor of 0 or invisible state to a normal scale factor of 1, then I would have to change the values of these scale X and scale Y properties to 0. But if the start keyframe is not the first frame of the clip, like in this example, we may not change its properties values, as it will cause part of the video before the start keyframe to be animated inadvertently, as I'm showing you now. The reason for this is because, by default, the first frame of a clip is a start keyframe of all of its properties. Consequently, if the leftmost manually inserted keyframe has different properties values than those of the clip's start frame, that keyframe will be treated as an end keyframe by OpenShot. And this will cause the properties values before that frame to be interpolated, causing the unintended animation we saw just now. Alright, the third step is to determine the end keyframe of the animation and the properties values of that frame. This end keyframe will set the animation duration, which together with its properties values will determine how smooth the animation will be. To make it clearer, let's go back to our zooming in animation exercise. I'll make this zooming in animation lasts for 2 seconds, from a normal scale factor of 1 to a scale factor of 2. So technically speaking, since this video's frame rate is 24 frames per second, the values of the scale X and scale Y properties of the 48 frames that make up the animation will be interpolated based on the start value of 1 and the end value of 2, using the selected interpolation mode. So first I'll move the playhead to the 3 second mark on the timeline ruler. This frame will be our animation's end keyframe. Then I will set the scale X and scale Y properties of this frame to 2. This will also automatically insert the frame into the scale X and scale Y properties as a keyframe, as indicated by the green highlight of both properties, and the keyframe marker on the clip at the playhead position. Alright, before we continue to the fourth or the last step of adding animation, let's play the video and see how our zooming in animation looks like. As you might have observed, the zoom in rate or speed is constant throughout the animation duration, which is quite boring. This is because the interpolation mode of our zooming in animation is still the default interpolation mode of linear interpolation. It would be great if we could make the zoom in rate nonlinear such as fast in the beginning and slower towards the end of the animation. And this is where the fourth or the final step comes in, which is to set the animation's interpolation mode. To change the animation's interpolation mode, first move the playhead to the end keyframe of the animation. To move the playhead to any particular key point quickly, we can use the previous and next key point buttons on the timeline toolbar. Then go back to the interpolated properties, which for this zooming in animation are the scale X and scale Y properties. As you can see here, the scale X and Y properties have interpolation mode icons at the right end of their property value sliders. Right now the icons are straight diagonal lines, which indicate linear interpolation mode. To make the zoom in rate fast in the beginning and slower towards the end, we have to change the interpolation mode to a non-linear interpolation. To do that, right-click the property and then select Bezier. As you can see here, OpenShot has a number of non-linear, curve-based interpolation modes, which can make your animations look more interesting. Basically there are three types of Bezier interpolation modes, Ease-In, Ease-Out, and Ease-In-Out, where each has eight different shapes to choose from. 
Bezier Eason will produce an animation that is slow in the beginning and faster towards the end. Ease Out will make the animation go fast in the beginning and slower towards the end. While Ease In Out will produce a bounce effect. For this zooming in animation, we'll select the standard Ease Out. Now as you can see here, the scale X and Y properties interpolation mode icons change to a curve, and the keyframe marker on the clip will change to circle. Alright, now let's play the video and see how the zooming in animation looks like. To show you how the interpolation mode makes the animation more interesting, let me move the playhead frame by frame using the arrow key on the keyboard, from the start keyframe to the end keyframe. As you can see on the properties panel, the rate of change of the scale X and scale Y properties values follows the selected interpolation modes curve, instead of a constant rate between two subsequent frames. Alright, so basically those are the principles of animating a video in OpenShot. How smooth the animation will be, is determined by the animation's duration, the amount of the property value change between the start and the end keyframes, and the interpolation mode. To create a more complex composite animation, we can always interpolate multiple properties in between a pair of start and end keyframes. For example, for this exercise, if we want to zoom in to any location other than the center of the screen, we'll also need to interpolate the values of the location properties between the zooming in's keyframes. Alright, before I end this tutorial, I want to show you how to cancel a property value interpolation of an animation, as well as removing a particular animation entirely from a clip that has got multiple animations. To cancel a particular property interpolation of an animation, remove the start and end keyframes from that property. To do that, first move the playhead to the animation's end keyframe. Then go to Properties panel, right-click the interpolated property, and then click Remove Keyframe. After that, move the playhead to the start keyframe and then repeat the previous step to remove the start keyframe from the interpolated property. To remove an animation from a clip, cancel all the property interpolations of that animation. So for this example, if I remove the start and end keyframes from the scale Y property, the zooming in animation will be completely removed from the clip. Alright, so that's how easy it is to add animations to a video in OpenShot. By now, you should be able to add any animation effect to any part of your video to make it more interesting. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching.